39 miles up at more than 12,000 miles per hour, a routine re-entry becomes a national tragedy. This day has brought terrible news. The walls started shaking, a uh, thunderous noise booming, um, which seemed to be right in our backyard. We lost the data, and that's when we be clearly began to know that we had a bad day. The Columbia's lost. There are no survivors. So sad and sorry for the families of people that have been lost. Tonight, from launch to the last minutes of Columbia's ill-fated return trip, what NASA and the astronauts knew. That impact was on the left wing. We can't discount, discount that there might be a connection. Research mission finally underway. This is a CNN special report. Columbia, a shuttle tragedy. Columbia now rolling on to the proper azimuth for a 39-degree inclination. To you are looking at a live picture at Nagadotus, Texas, where debris from the space shuttle Columbia waits to be collected and analyzed. Good evening from CNN World Headquarters in Atlanta. I'm Miles O'Brien. For Americans who lived through Challenger or the Apollo fire, the feelings are all too familiar. Disbelief, shock, and grief. Once again, we are reduced to looking at pictures over and over and asking ourselves, how could this have happened? And once again, we are learning the names of extraordinary people, seven of them, whose lives were filled with knowledge, accomplishments and daring we're learning about them but now we will never get to know them for the second time in nasa's history a space shuttle has been lost along with its entire crew the shuttle columbia streaking home after a 16-day mission suddenly crumbled broke apart and burned up just minutes before its scheduled touchdown it was a scene that horrified the nation much of the world during the next hour, we're going to tell you as much as we can about what happened early this morning in the bright blue big sky over the state of Texas. To report on this tragedy and the investigation, we will be joined by CNN's Wolf Blitzer, the Johnson Space Center near Houston, Texas, Lou Dobbs at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And if you're just joining us or have been away from our coverage for a time, we begin with my colleague Anderson Cooper, who will summarize the latest developments. Anderson. Thanks very much, Miles. New information continues to come into CNN regarding today's shuttle disaster. Human remains have been recovered in Hemp Hill, Texas. Authorities presume it is one of the astronauts pending positive ID. There are no reports anyone on the ground was injured by falling debris. The remaining shuttles, Atlantis, Discovery, and Endeavor, have been grounded for the foreseeable future. The next shuttle flight had been set for March 1st no longer. One problem NASA will have to address in the meantime is how to resupply the crew aboard the International Space Station. No immediate danger, they have enough food and supplies to last them through the end of May. And President Bush returned to the White House from Camp David soon after learning this morning's tragic news. A short time later, he made a televised address to the nation and ordered flags at government sites lowered to half-staff that will last through Wednesday. The president said despite the painful loss, the U.S. space program would continue. Those are the latest developments at this hour. Now our special coverage continues with Miles O'Brien. Thank you, Anderson. Columbia's mission came to an abrupt and catastrophic end, uh, literally over the heads of NASA controllers in Houston, Texas. And that's where we find CNN's Wolf Blitzer this evening. Wolf. Miles, the words were very chilling. The words, the last communication that we heard, mission control here at the uh, Johnson Space Center, in communication with the uh, space shuttle Columbia, the seven members of the crew. Let's listen to the final exchange between the crew and mission control. And Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger. Uh, That was it. That was the last exchange between Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center, where I am right now, and the uh, members of the crew of the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia. The next thing, uh, within a few minutes, white streaks were seen flashing across the skies over Texas, streaks containing debris, scaring a lot of people, of course. They heard a tumultuous explosion, a loud boom, and then the next thing they know, debris raining on parts of Texas, raining all across Texas. 
indeed all the way over to Louisiana and perhaps as far as way, away as other states as well. CNN's uh, Ed Lavadera is joining us now from Nacogdoches, Texas, where there's some, been some extensive debris already spotted. Ed? Well, Wolf, if you can imagine this morning, as many North Texas and East Texas residents were waking up this morning, they had heard word that they would be able to get a chance to see the space shuttle streaking, its uh, plume streaking across the Texas sky, which is a bright blue color this morning as it was headed toward Florida. Many people watching it on live television here today, this morning, getting that rare chance to see the space shuttle streak toward Florida, and many people got to see live uh, what had happened, the catastrophic ending to the Space Shuttle Columbia's mission. And if you can imagine, just from the southeast point of Dallas, out, uh, imagine a, a cone shape spreading out from across East Texas and into parts of Louisiana. We now understand a debris field that is massive for investigators to have to uh, comb through and search through. They have warned people here to stay away from the debris. We're here at a parking lot in downtown Nacogdoches, Texas, where there's a about a three-foot piece of debris, which has been kind of a gathering point for many people here to come by and reflect as to what has happened here today. But this scene has played out all over East Texas, as many people have experienced debris falling near their homes and that sort of thing. We understand that there has been a huge effort to collect all of this, or at least to begin the process of uh, containing those the, that wreckage so that nobody touches it. And for the most part, we understand that most people have been paying attention. We did get a, a chance to speak with many people today who describe it as two minutes of a thunderous noise that they heard streaking across the sky, and many people sharing with us today uh, what they experienced this morning. That's a little more real, isn't it? To actually see pieces of it, especially here in East Texas, you know, we're not not close to a space center or anything. You feel a little closer now? Yes, I do. I believe we all will for a while. I've seen the tracks uh, after I came. I rushed out of the cafe and and uh, seen the the streak in the sky that were aircraft that came over, and then we heard the the long continuous noise which didn't sound normal. Uh, it sounded like an explosion, and the, the noise, like thunder, kept uh, kept in the atmosphere, and ended up, uh, we knew something possibly happened. Well, to give you an idea of just how difficult this collection process will be, I've spoken already with several residents who said several hours, hours ago they phoned in reports of small pieces of debris into the authorities here. Uh, people would come by and check it out real quick, but that still hasn't been picked up. I imagine that's the case, the, the case throughout much of East Texas. Some areas are just very remote and very rural areas in some parts, so it might take some time just to be able to find all of the debris that's scattered over a massive area. Wolf? Have you seen, Ed, any uh, of the authorities actually collect the debris? And if, if you have, how do they do it? Do they have special equipment? Uh, we, we have seen in, in a couple of places and, uh, and also spoken with a resident who, who saw them uh, pick up the debris as well. Uh, they, they do take uh, you know, good care in, in terms of figuring out what exactly uh, the situation is. And I think it depends on each individual situation where the debris is found as to exactly how they handle it. But of course they want to be able to preserve everything that's on there because as, as you know, Wolf investigators are going to count on a lot of this wreckage to perhaps piece this together. And even one tiny piece of debris could hold a clue to the cause of this explosion. Uh, Ed, Ed Lavendera, thanks very much for joining us from uh, Nacogdoches here in Texas. Uh, CNN's Chicago Bureau Chief Jeff Locke's here with me at the Johnson Space Center. Jeff Locke, uh, you've been talking to people here as they gather these makeshift memorials that are going on. A lot of sad folks. I don't doubt we're going to see it all over the country tomorrow, Wolf, but tonight this is ground zero. This is where it's happening. This is, of course, where the astronauts lived and where they worked. I want to show us some pictures out at the front gate. It's an incredible scene out there, and I've been to a lot of I don't know, school shootings, plane wrecks. I've never seen a, a memorial grow up so rapidly and so large out at, the, out at the Johnson Space Center main gate. There are flowers out there. There are balloons. There's an Israeli flag draped out there. All sorts of makeshift memorials, uh, uh, poems that have been already written by folks, you can tell, that have just been crafted. Uh, it's an incredible scene out there. And as we said, this is a, it's a company town. Yes, it's an oil town, Houston. Yes, it's a cow town, but it's a space town. This is a place where... Uh, where these folks uh, have lived and worked and uh, trained. All right, we're going to be continuing to talk about what's going on. Uh, Jeff Locke, thanks very much. I know you were here, unfortunately, 1986, when Indeed. the Challenger exploded as well. We'll make some comparisons as, as we go along. Uh, a lot of sad people here at the Johnson Space Center. This investigation, obviously, only just beginning. It'll last for months, if not years. Back to you, Miles.